And let me just make sure that we are actually doing it. We're live on Periscope and Trovo, D Live, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, um, twitch.tv slash the Hake Report. I will be live there shortly, if not already. And of course, Talk Stream Live and JLP Live. It's 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Standard Time, Friday, February 12th. Excuse me, 2021. I am James Hake, and this is the Hake Report. I'm going to be touching on, well, I will be getting to your calls. 888-775-3773. Some of you are already on hold. Black History Month is a disgrace. There was this propaganda picture that was presented to me when I was younger, like a kid or maybe a high schooler or junior high or something, that it was presented to me as if it was a good thing. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then later I think about it, that's not cool. I'm going to show you this picture later. Kamala and the skim are pushing women in the workforce, which is the worst thing for both the women and the workforce and society, but they pretend that it's not. I remember Hillary Clinton was doing the same thing. That Japanese prime minister, (laughs) former Japanese prime minister, 83-year-old man, fired or resigned, forced to resign from the Olympics. The Olympics are not a good organization, I don't think. Speaking of that disgraceful picture that's from the Olympics, I'm going to show it to you. I have some information about that gorilla, so-called girl. Turns out she's not a girl. She's like older than me. 40-year-old woman. (laughs) I didn't know that she was 40. (laughs) Some people aren't surprised. I thought I was surprised. Um, The Supreme Court and Joe Biden, or the Biden so-called administration, are pushing anti-discrimination laws, which are really anti-American laws. It's pro-LGBTQIA stuff, which is even worse than regular anti-discrimination laws, I guess. But it's getting more and more out of hand, and it never should have... The anti-discrimination laws never should have been instituted in the first place. I think they're unconstitutional. It's It's a violation of freedom and decency. And The Bachelor, there's some drama going on with The Bachelor that I told you about in Hake News. This 24-year-old white girl, she looks like she's 16, put out some apology to BIPOX because she went to an Old South party with, like, some fraternity or sorority or something. It's so silly. And perhaps some stuff that I didn't get to yesterday. What a mess. So anyway, let's get on with the show. be talking about some disgraceful things going on, but don't be alarmed. Don't overreact, but uh, we can talk about it. 888-775-3773. Just a fun show today. I hope you like it. Oh, it's the Hake Report. The Hake Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hake Report. <laughs> the Hake Report. La, la, la. I mean, hey, guys! (laughs) I'm chuckling because Ian, who called in yesterday, I believe, for the first time. I forget where he's from. Maybe California. He saw these pictures, these photographs that Joel Friday here is showing you that I supplied him for the opening slideshow of my intro on the video feed here, if you were watching the video. And for your the people listening on the audio feed, We showed photographs from a TV show, I consider it fairly degenerate, I don't know much about it though, called The Bachelor. And The Bachelor is basically a matchmaking kind of TV show where there's this one person who is featured in any given show episode, I guess, or season or something. I think it's a season, right? One guy who's called a bachelor, and he's looking for a wife or something. And so... 
multiple different women are presented to him and he gets to date each of them. <laughs> and there's these pictures. To me, they're a bit disturbing, but um, <laughs> of this black guy. The Bachelor has a, is a black guy for the first time ever, I think, in the franchise history, because this has been a long-running TV show. And their top contestant this year, I gather, is this white woman who's 24 years old. I call her, I use the term woman loosely because she looks really young. And there's this big controversy because she appeared at a southern Dixie ball. A southern, old south themed, like a formal event, right? Like a dance or something. And they're dressed up like southern bells, only like, they're kind of dressed up like prostitute version of southern bells. Very nice. That's cool. I'm talking about something else other than this southern party. But, uh, <laughs> thank you, Jesse. He walked in with a cool sweatshirt. Um, and there's photographs of this black guy apparently going to the mall or getting all flirty with this presumably white girl. I don't know. She has kind of a tan, so it's hard to tell if she's Hispanic or white. I think she's regular white. But somebody said, Ian said, is that Joelle? He got a white girl? <laughs> and you know what? That kind of crossed my mind. Like, I could pick, but this is not Joelle. I could picture Joelle d dating, because his family is all a mishmash of people. He has white looking people in his family. He has Mexican people in his family. There is, <laughs> he, ha he has uh, blacks in his family. He even speaks a little Spanish. There's a brief story to this. <laughs> you want to come on and explain? Right, the, the cat got to come out the bag. <laughs> so originally, um, I was asked to oh, do yeah. that part. Yeah. And then they were looking for a specific look. Yeah. And then um, I didn't end up doing it. And then they end up going out with this guy. And then people say I look <laughs> like him everywhere. People tell, text me, you look just like the... That's funny. The, the bash. So they were looking for a specific... Yeah, a certain look, look. for sure, yeah. Like a tall, lean, young, uh, black man. Right. Yeah, this guy has, like, a pointed beard. That's the, that's one of the major differences I notice between him and Joel. Yeah, so yeah. it was not Joel. He, he did not get a, a white woman. <laughs> Unless you count Hispanic as white Hispanic. <laughs> I think he might be dating a Hispanic. I'm not sure. This girl here <laughs> looks mixed. She looks not, not yeah. full white, maybe a little Mexican, mixed white. Right. Yeah. It's such a mess, um, and you know, like, to me, it looks, interracial dating looks weird, but to Joelle, I don't think it looks weird, because you just no. grew up with it, right? Right. And I grew up a little bit with it, like, but it's, it just seems odd. Well, it's a little bit different, too, because my mom is not black, oh, she's black, I mean, she's a yeah. quarter black, so okay. she's very fair-skinned, and we grew up, uh, she grew up around uh, Mexicans, so she has the the color and tone of it. Yeah. So I never even seen my mom is not like a, a black woman, so I didn't really right. see that. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. And uh so we've had big old debates about interracial dating and marriage over the years on the Jesse Lee Peterson show, before and after Joelle came on the scene. <laughs> um so it's a it is a very fraught situation over there at The Bachelor. So Joel dodged a bullet by not going on The Bachelor. Did you think of it as degenerate? Is that why you didn't do it? Uh, th that was part of the reason. Or immoral. Um, yeah, that was part of the reason. You know, there there's other reasons that, that influenced the decision too, but it, it just, yeah, I, just, I don't know if it would be for me, but you never know. But yeah. I, just, I just didn't feel like that was the right move. Yeah, it seems like kind of emasculating. Like these people present... As if you're like a prince, and you need to be spoiled right, with right, these right. this harem or yeah. something like that. And, they, and they're pretty, they're pretty degenerate in the things that they do too. The, yeah. The first dates, they're like kissing, every, kissing on everybody and doing a. Yeah. So, yeah. Weird. Yeah. What a mess. How long has that thing been running? And this is the first year that they've had a black guy be, <laughs> be the, uh, the one, the bachelor. I don't know, but it's awful. Let me show you another terrible picture that I consider to be terrible, even though I thought it was kind of cool, it looked awesome, but I didn't know that this was a communist fist that they were throwing. 
And, you know, these these guys are presented as though they're heroes now, I think. This uh, picture from the Olympics from 1968, where these, I guess they were sprinters, John Carlos and Tommy Smith were showing their raised black power fist with a uh, black glove on the hand that's raised. One of them is his right arm raised straight up. He's the winner. He's first place. Right on to him for getting first place, but not so right on for falling for this madness. And third place guy, too, is another black guy from USA. And this is not showing pride in America or allegiance to America or to what's right. No, it's pushing this Black Panther type stuff. Tommy Smith was the guy on, on the top. And John Carlos is the guy on the right. And we're showing the old, it's a classic photo of them raising their black power fist after the 200 meter race of the 1968 Summer Olympics. And they're both, I guess, wearing something called the Olympic Project for Human Rights badges. And so is this Australian guy, the silver medalist, second place, Peter Norman. White guy, right on. From Australia, wearing the OPHR, Olympic Project for Human Rights badge, in solidarity with these guys. But to me, that's disgusting. The Olympics are subversive, even back then. And they're worse today. This is from the Olympics, the Summer Olympics, a 200-meter race they won. And by the way, meters are globalist. <laughs> we do miles. Does Britain still do miles? <laughs> I think so, because they're the ones who originated it. UK? But, yeah, poor blacks oppressed up there on the winner's stage, getting kissed up to. To me, that's, to me, that's wrong. And maybe these guys are young and they don't know better back then. And back, to me, this is no better than Colin Kaepernick, who's also disgusting. Actually, Colin Kaepernick might be worse. Because he did it without the force of the establishment behind him. This was establishment people promoting this, these people to do this. Wearing this human rights badge. What? They're not for what's right. The Olympics, I mean, the human rights people. There's a human rights campaign that's pro-gay. Pretending that gay is right and encouraging human beings to destroy their lives in the, in the gay agenda and being miserable and blaming everybody. So, um, I used to think that these black guys looked cool like that, but... And they still kind of look cool, but it's evil underneath what, it, what they're doing. And I don't know what these guys are, if they were about that or if they were just following the crowd, because there's a push, and I wonder with the situation with the bachelor guy, the black bachelor guy, because the, uh, I'm going to tell you the story of this young white woman, so-called white woman, she looks mixed to Joelle and me, who's apologizing for having done an Old South party, and pictures surfaced from 2018, and she dressed up like a little Indian girl, too, at one point, like an Indian squaw, I guess for Halloween or whatever, and she's apologizing to the BIPOCs. The BIPOC is, I forget what it is, has something to do with race. I'll explain it later, maybe, if I think of it. But it's some dumb thing. I wonder, too, if that guy is feeling the pressure from the community, right? The black guy, in this case. To pretend to be offended that she's attended an Old South thing. You know, because it's not offensive to love the South or to go to a, um, visit a, uh, old... What is that thing called? Plantation? Where they had slaves in the South? And have your f wedding there? There was a country music singer, I think. Woman or actor or guy, maybe both. A couple, a white couple, went down and had a beautiful wedding at a beautiful southern plantation. I showed it to you guys a, um, several months back, I want to say. At a very nice plantation. I would want to go there. But they want to pretend like, oh, this is offensive. It has 
you're you're hearkening and longing for slavery back or something dumb like that. Give me a break. Anyway, so Black History Month is a disgrace. They're kissing up to, um, to evil. What a shame. You know what else is evil? This kissing up to women stuff. Women working. Kamala Harris. I told you guys about in the skit in the Hake News at the beginning of our at the end of hour one of the Jesse Lee Peterson show today. Kamala Harris is talking to the far left female outlet, the skim, or did talk to them or replied to them or whatever. Pushing the lie, using probably fake manipulative manipulated statistics, probably, cherry-picked information. Facts are not truth, by the way. About educating women and putting them to work and pretending that that helps society. It's ill-gotten gain. Yeah, maybe you get more money when you have both the father and the mother working. You get more money when everybody in society is doing it. Then the costs go up, so it's harder for the normal people who want to do it the right way, the traditional way, to be able to afford to just do it the normal way where the man works, the woman stays home. But it's still doable, I hear. Some people do it. Right on. Right on. I cracked. But... In reality, women are more depressed than ever. The children are more out of control than ever. The morality is down the tubes. They're pretending that, oh, we need to end this discrimination. We need to push this equal pay for equal work stuff. When it's uh, based on a manipulative deception. That, oh, women aren't getting the pay. It's pay the same as men for the same work. They're not doing the same work. And they're also... um, as Jordan B. Peterson said, and he's right, women are more like, uh, many, in many cases, they're more agreeable, so-called. <laughs> Which some may dispute this. But they'll, um, they don't know how to advocate for themselves and make a deal. Right? And anyways, they, they want time off and paid leave and all kinds of stuff. So they're advocating for paid, being paid not to work. They cry, just like many blacks do, or many people in general, they'll pull the race card, pull the woman card. Oh, you're discriminating against me because I'm a woman. It just causes problems and suspicion, endless misery, ill-gotten gain. What a shame. And over in the Olymp- speaking of the Olympics... Did you guys cover this on the Jesse Lee Peterson show where the, the Japanese prime minister said that women talk too much? <laughs> I don't know if they covered it, but I mentioned it in Hake News at the end of one of the hours. I think hour one. Yoshiro Mori. I think he's an 83-year-old man. Can you look up Yoshiro Mori? M-O-R-I. I. M-O-R-I. Yoshiro. Y-O-S-H-I-R-O. Just to show a little picture of him. He's like this dignified Japanese man. (laughs) 83 years old, former um, Japanese prime minister. In 2014, he was selected to head this Olympic committee for the Tokyo Olympics, which is supposed to take take place some summer. And I don't know what summer that would be. What? I don't know. Because it seems like, were the Summer Olympics supposed to happen back in 2020? And then they were canceled, delayed until 2021 or 2022? Wow, he's looking old. Dang. Yeah, so Tokyo, I guess 2021, they were delayed because of the COVID communist shutdowns, right? But there was a goal stated for the Olympic Committee for 40% of the committee to be women. And so this guy says, well, actually... (laughs) Let me pull up the the thing. He said, on boards with a lot of women, with a lot of women, the board meetings take so much time. Women have a strong sense of competition. If one person person raises their hand, dang, he is old, but he's 83, so. Others probably, if one person raises their hand, others probably think, I need to say something too. That's why everyone speaks. (laughs) There's a, I like that picture of him when he's younger and, and a meteor. So at first, this guy wasn't going to resign, but everybody was hyped about it. He blamed the media. He did resign, after all. He said he did not intend to demean women, but he told the truth. And there's a lot of female-minded males who are like this, too, but 
He blamed the media for fueling the public anger, and they did, of course. It's ridiculous. Former Japanese Prime Minister, he said, Oh, this is the, the last thing I'm going to do for my country is help make, put together the, the Summer Olympics, Tokyo Olympics. So he made sexist, meaning true, comments, saying women talk too much in meetings and have a strong sense of rivalry or competition or whatever. And so everybody's calling for him, not everybody, but dumb people simps are calling for him to resign. Hundreds of Olympic volunteers quit. Corporate sponsors, of course, corporate sponsors are not for what's right, ever, seemingly, anymore, anyway. I, mean, I don't know if they ever have been. They're kissing up to the women and saying, oh, this is wrong. So Maurice stepped down and apologized for all the trouble he caused. What a mess. But right on, I think it was worth it to get that out there. You don't need all that stress. You're 83 years old, man. Tell the truth and walk away. Nice. And they don't even have a replacement for this guy. Seemed like he was a decent leader. Anyway, right on. Right on. To me, it's actually kind of a funny story. But it's silly. It just shows you how silly and shallow people are. They can't handle the truth being told about them. Meanwhile, you have he Maisie Hirono, the Hawaiian... What is she, a senator? Is she a senator? Or is she just a congressman, a female congressman of Hawaii, a, a so-called American, saying men just shut up and step up and do the right thing for a change. And she's talking about the fake, you know, like Me Too type movement mess. Fake, false accusations of women, unproven accusations by women against men. So she, gets, she can talk about men like a dog, and she gets rewarded. And I just want to say to the men of this country, just yeah. shut up and step up. Do the right thing for a change. <laughs> Psycho woman. And she's rewarded, and she's shameless. But, uh, you know, can only blame the men for uh, letting that happen, right? Anyway, um, let me talk with Thomas, a first-time caller <laughs> in Indianapolis. He wants to have a fun little call, I think. Thomas, what's up? Hey, James, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing well. You know, speaking about The Bachelors, have you, have you been talking to Holly? Holly Hake? <laughs> no, I haven't been talking to her. Why not? Because I'm over here and she's way over there. How am I going to talk to her? <laughs> she's in New Jersey, I think. Huh? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, I'm just trying to make it funny. That's funny. That is funny. I just want to say I love your show, Jane. Appreciate that, man. I love your show very much. Yeah. Yeah, I called Jesse like about a year ago. And man, you have grown a lot. Oh, you right really on, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully I'll grow agree. even more in the coming year. Thank Stronger, you. not fatter. <laughs> Never yeah, I think 2021 might be our best year because yeah. it really can be bad at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. You know, um, mm -hmm. the liberals made all kinds of money hating Trump. Now we get to make all kinds of money showing tough love to the... Biden and the rest of the sleazy people. Tough love, though. Can't no hate. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> right on, That's Thomas. Really true. Yep. Oh, and maybe one thing, uh, one criticism I do have. Okay. It's like with with donning armor. Yes. So like, he likes to say that he's a centrist, and Bible go to guy did call him out on his opinion. Yeah. Because, um. And I just kind of wish that you would be like, be stronger on people that say they are centrist because they really are not. Okay. They yeah, that's interesting. That they are. Mm -hmm. They always say that they are um, the center of, let's say, political stuff, religious stuff, or even socially, but they really are not. Yeah. They just talk a lot, but make no sense. Okay. Yeah, I accept mm -hmm. that criticism. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. donning armor. He's, yeah, just, yeah. He, he thinks that he's being objective because he sees the craziness that he thinks that he sees anyway on both sides. And there may be craziness on, on both sides from the Christians and from the anti-Christians. And he's mm-hmm. like a, he's a secular type of, I forget what he is anyway. But yep. yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's no, he's no, uh, I don't even know if he th- thinks that he's a centrist exactly, but he thinks that he's a independent in between the, yeah. the, the extremes of, I forget what topics, but the mask mm-hmm. versus the anti-mask. He's pro-mask, but not pro-lockdown and all kinds of things. Yeah, a lot of people think that they're independent-minded and the only objective, insane person that they know. And <laughs> Usually it's not really true. So, yep, fair point, true. man. Appreciate that. Thank you. And that is not Joel. <laughs> yeah, that isn't Joel. <laughs> I think Joel is your son. Like, uh... <laughs> Only three percent white. Yeah. And all black. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, Hey. All right. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Appreciate that, Thomas. Good to hear from you. That's cool. What were you gonna say? Were you gonna say something? No, I mean, no. <laughs> okay. He wasn't gonna say anything. That's funny. Oh, you know, I I think that we have an update from a young woman that I talked to before, Stephanie from Manhattan, New York. She's the one who was kicked out of the Trader Joe's, and she refused to wear a mask, and she has mixed babies, and she said, Oh, you just want to discriminate against me because I have black children, because she shops with her children, I think. And uh, she was accused of being, having, making racial remarks, and so she was banned from a Trader Joe's, and all kinds of mess going on. And she's kind of an activist. Stephanie, it's good to hear from you again. What's up? Hi, James. Hey. Yes. Um, I just heard back from Trader Joe's corporate, and um, the woman was very nice at first, but then she said that I am not allowed in the store. She talked to the people there, the leadership there, and they have documentation that I've said things that have made people uncomfortable, that I was abusive towards the staff, the things I've said. Uh And I I said, what did I say? You know, did I say that I have black children? Like, that's all I possibly may have said to them. Yeah. Did she she tell you? She never, so she didn't even tell you what you said that. No, no. Well, I mean, I guess you just have to respect their wishes. You don't think I should make a federal case out of it and, like, sue over free speech? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. The, yeah. the, I will tell you the courts are not on the side of people who, um, who want to stand on what's right. And you may not have, I don't know if you went about it in completely the right way because you, it sounded like you were a bit militant about this whole thing. Maybe more than was necessary or, or needed, you know? Well, I was being ganged up on. I'm a woman standing there with a a little baby, and all these people are saying, you can't come in the store, when all I was doing was saying, I can't go in with a mask. Can I please go in and shop? Right. It was about masks initially, and yeah, Yeah. I got upset. But when you have, like, 15 people from Trader Joe's and Target and security and people coming in, just, you know, you're up against a mob. Yeah, I got upset. I'm sorry. Okay. yeah, See, I wasn't, that's, I that's wasn't going happened. in there to like make a scene, and I wasn't going in there to prove a point. I was trying to just be respectful. Right, but they got under they got under your skin and uh, got you to shoot yourself in the foot by getting upset. Which I'm, I mean, I understand. A lot of times we can't control ourselves when uh, people cause us to get upset, but yeah. um, that's that's what happened. Just. Accept it, learn from it, learn from yourself what you can do better, and never mind them, that's, that's their, it's kind of their loss. And I know that it's going to be a little inconvenient for you, because that was a very convenient place to shop, but, um, I mean, if you, if somebody, don't just trust any lawyer if you try to get to a lawyer, because I think you're better off winning on the streets, and by the streets I mean, like, in real life, rather than in a courtroom. Because courtrooms are not on our the side. Hearts and minds of people <laughs> about this. I, I mean, not necessarily. I, can stand I mean, I, on the street. I don't know. You can, picket yeah, and... you can pick it or something if you really want to do that. But um, yeah. it might be best just to lay low 
Yeah. It's up. It's totally up to you, but because I don't really know the situation. You described it, but but I don't. I I wasn't I was there. Definitely, you know? I was not like yelling. I was just lecturing people. I was like, if Harriet Tubman were here and you know the famous Harriet Tubman quote like I freed a thousand slaves I could have freed a thousand more if they knew they were slaves I was saying that to these people <laughs> about the math right like that's all I'm doing is telling these people like how can you go along with this and then push it back on me because I'm not going along with it right but that's the world that's um <laughs> Joelle says you could have done that without that you know um you can't force people to wake up. Yeah. And so, um, and you can't be mad when the people refuse. Okay. Yeah. And, I- and if they get antagonistic towards you, that's to be expected. It's the world. The world is evil. Yeah. And it, and it sounded like the world got inside you and you reacted in a worldly way too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I just... Where's your husband? Buy some food. My husband, I mean, I'm in a bad situation. I don't really want to get into it. No problem. So no like worries. Irrelevant. All I right. do have black kids, but, you know, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wish you well, Stephanie. Don't let it get to you. Do you do Jesse Lee All Peterson's right. silent prayer? Yes, I do, and I nice. forgave my mother, so right I'm on. trying my best. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I respect that. That's nice. All right. Th- thank you, James. All right. Take care. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Wow, she heard back from them, and of course, they took the side of the, uh, probably more evil people. But it's completely to be expected. I remember I've called these corporate places before. I remember when I found out that Home Depot was participating in those so-called gay pride parades. I called them up and said, I'm boycotting you guys. (laughs) Because I don't agree with you guys pushing this homosexual mess. And, you know, the woman on the other end of the line was like, Oh, I believe in... I forget what they said. It was something dumb. It was some lame one-liner about equal rights for people. I respect, you know, dignity for everybody or something like that. I said, I do too, but I don't agree with going along with what's wrong. I think I might have gotten hung up on. I used to call the offices of the senators, like Feinstein's office, Senator Feinstein's office, and complain to the staff and be like, I disagree with this, I disagree with this. It'd be like early in the morning, be calling Washington, D.C. on my way to over to work, <laughs> be calling and saying, I, you're wrong about this, you're wrong about this, and I would get hung up on <laughs> by the gays. Presumably, they sounded, they didn't sound very straight. Anyway. Let me get to my second favorite caller, Earl in Michigan, for a brief, nice little conversation. How are you doing, Earl? Hola, buenos dias. Hey. I'm doing fine. Right on. Uh, Do you ever watch Church with Jesse Lee Peterson, Earl? No. Why not? Because I don't believe in this type of uh, message and so forth. Oh, you don't believe um, the truth. Yeah, I know that. Do you go to no, church? Do you go to other churches? Uh, don't believe the truth. <laughs> He's hung up on what problem. I told him. <laughs> huh? Hey, hey, I said that's the problem. The problem? You're, you have a problem with the truth? That you don't believe in the truth? No, that you call, that you label anything that you believe is the truth. That's what folks that don't have an argument do. They just automatically say, I, I, what I say is the truth. And yeah, that's what Tony does. Is that is history. true. People who don't have an argument do say that. But people who now, are right say also it. say that, too. You say that all the time. Jesus said it. Was Jesus, did Jesus not have an argument? You're not Jesus, are you? Did Jesus say that? Say what? That he told the, he was just telling the truth. Of course he said that. Thank you. So how do you how do you equate yourself to the truth? Whatever you say. And it's not only biblical things you say oh, is the truth. You say whatever you're talking about, political, anything, you say it's the truth because you're saying it. 
I don't say it's the truth because I'm saying it. I'm saying it because no, it's the truth. I'm, no, you're saying it because you believe it's the truth. Because so, it is. Uh, I believe it because it is. <laughs> no, it ain't the truth. It ain't, it ain't no more the truth than what somebody else says that, that, that says it's the truth. Not true. It's your truth. There's no it, cocaine, okay, Oprah. Earl, do you go to church? None of your business. Oh, come on. Is Joel there? No, he stepped out. Uh, okay, uh, I was going to uh, comment on something him and uh, uh, Jesse talked about this caller named Kurt from uh, Georgia who had an experience with this white woman that needed to, uh, that wanted to know if he lived in the area. Did you know that I, I used to be able to play Georgia on, my, on the piano? Did you know that I used to be able to play the piano a little bit? I would play Georgia you know? on the piano. The one by, uh, what's I, his name? Ray Charles? Yeah, Georgia on my mind. Yeah, yeah. it's a nice song. That's good. Good for you. Thank you. Uh, did you also make up your bed and do everything else? <laughs> That's very... I used to, a little. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... I mean, that's really important. But, right. uh, <laughs> yeah, about, uh, I was going to talk to him, ask him, uh, why does he think that, uh, black folks have to answer to the white folks' sensibilities to prove that they Oh. Yeah, okay, so you're, you're referencing a case in which there was a caller on the Jesse Lee Peterson show named Kurt yeah, who Kurt said from a Georgia. white... A white woman, I think, was racist to me. She said, you don't live here. She accused him of not living here, and when he really did live there, according to him. And Joelle said, you know, she's not necessarily wrong for trying to look out for her community. He didn't necessarily have to give her his home address. That's kind of personal. But he didn't have to, he also didn't have to say, oh, you're just being racist. He could have understood, maybe he couldn't because he was, was angry, but had he paused and uh, had some compassion and understanding and patience, he might have understood that, you know, people are looking out for their communities. There's a lot of crime being committed by blacks. And that's Regardless a fact. Regardless of that, you, uh, 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 black folks don't have to answer for every black that, uh, no, they that don't, but they black that have, have done crime. But shame on, but hold life. on, Earl. But shame on them for only blaming the whites when the whites get suspicious of innocent blacks. When it, they should be, if if they're going to be resentful of anybody, they should be resentful of the black the black criminals who are giving them a, a bad name. No. Yes, they, they should. should. And they, actually, you're right. They shouldn't even be learn. resentful of them, but right, they should right. understand well, the situation. The white folks should learn, fella, that this is not South Africa. You don't have to produce papers to prove that you, and, and to their satisfaction, that uh, you you can you can move about where you want to, want to. And until they're satisfied, uh, uh, they think they have a right to demand it. Well, aren't you nasty and unreasonable? No, I'm just factual. No, you're but not. You have the you have the arrogance to think that just because. Uh, there are black in some in blacks in, the, in in some communities that commit crimes that every black because a white has suspicion and sensibility that they have to answer for it. I didn't say that, and, but it would are, be it, common decency would be respond decently to these people rather than being malicious and crying racism. No, the fact is... And South Africa, to, by the way, is a hellhole, and that is coming here, Earl, of what of black-on-white violence and crime and torture well, well, we're going and to violation of rights. Another, we're going to get into that another day. Okay. I because, hope so. Uh, because uh, uh, you forget that it it was like that for both sides. When the white rules rule, uh, it was the same way with... With the white folks against the blacks. I doubt it. But we won't talk about that. I doubt that. But uh, I doubt it was as bad as what they're doing no, to, to the whites now. That. You can doubt it all you want to. Because it's not I true. I when it was happening. No, I you don't know. So, 
So you can, all you can do is read books about it. You're just a sucker for but, communist uh, propaganda, Earl. But anyway, there, there's uh, the fact that blacks have to answer. To, Earl, to are you a fed? Don't have to be. Don't make stupid questions <laughs> or answers to, to deflect. Go on. But uh, uh, that uh, the sensibilities of white that you got to stop and answer. You say just because, and then if a person don't want to tell them that they live there, they don't have to. They have a right to walk down the street. They don't right. even have to live there. They have a right to, but it would be common decency to show some understanding. No, we would tell you it's not a, basically he volunteered. Uh, answering the question when they had a, a general polite conversation, and she came back and then demanded, saying, "You don't live here." Like she so, what, Earl? Before. This is a this is very common of women to do to make a false assumption. Just move on. Don't yeah, be such like a the, don't be such a girl about it. No, just Earl like the girl, the lady. Just like the lady. Shut up, you. Don't say it. Incel. <laughs> but I, I I'm a vol cell. I should uh, <laughs> check what you say. It's called being a, a Christian. Song. Because I realize the only thing, only reference you have, you know what a woman's like is what Jesse has taught you. You have no idea. Yeah. Oh, yes, what, I do. What, yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. All the thing you do is repeat. This is what, what, what the this is what the blacks say about about how whites. Oh, whites are listening oh, to Jesse know. about. Oh, whites are listening to Jesse about blacks. Whites don't have any first-hand experience about blacks. Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> we can see you guys. <laughs> Same with women. Anyway, Earl, I got to run. Nice talking with you. Well, there's one thing I want to talk about with Lewis. Real fast. Texas on your on your case. He made a a general comment uh, yesterday about uh, Luis. Uh, it's Luis. It's not Lewis. It's Luis. Yeah, Get it right. Luis have some respect. Texas. Uh. My bag, uh, <laughs> Louise of Texas. Yeah, he made a general statement that uh, character and and racist stereotypes uh, about black folk, and he has to realize that uh, there are racial stereotypes <laughs> about Hispanics. Right. So when he say, yeah, "I know it's true about black folk," don't you know folks can say they know it's true about Hispanics? I don't think he, he would dispute the, you on that. Say what? I think he would agree with you on that. And, there are many stereotypes and, about Hispanics that are true. I don't think that he would disagree. I know, but there are he doesn't some, have to mention just because he's mentioning the the stereotypes are true about blacks doesn't mean he has to mention all the no, other no, stereotypes are true. It's not true about blacks. It's only true about some blacks. Like it's only true about too some many, Hispanics. too many blacks. Okay, yeah, any, any. Any bad behavior is too many. Right. But it, uh, that's not the majority of blacks or the majority of uh, Hispanics that it applies But to. it's noticeably out of proportion uh, compared to the rest of the other races. Not that you're supposed to compare, from, but you guys like to kind of cover up the fact that you guys are have a like to identify with your culture, and you have a very degenerate culture supporting Democrats yeah, so of all so, things. So do you do. So when you have a degenerate culture. Thank you. And so forth. True. Uh, All right, Earl. Nice talking, I, man. I would leave one rule of thumb. That you know how how people uh, form cliques? Yep. And they talk about other folks? Well, uh, at one, <laughs> one time they'd, they'd be talking and you would join the clique. And uh, you would talk about somebody else. But little, little do you know. When you're not around, that same click will be talking about you. Right. So word to the wise, Louise. <laughs> you talk about blacks now. The real realize the same folks that you're talking with about blacks probably talk about you with blacks when you're not around. Right. But he I wasn't gossiping. You, he wasn't gossiping. He was just pointing no, out reality. Was, no, he was re he was making a general statement about about uh, bad ha habits. Of, of some blacks and attributed to blacks. See, you got to be specific because when no, you, you make don't. a broad statement, no. it covers 
for instance, it doesn't. You, you wouldn't say that. You don't a, police our you, language. This is America. We have the freedom of speech, Earl. You wouldn't apply that to Je- to Jesse, would you? I don't know. That he's lazy. <laughs> I don't know. And so forth. And and would you apply that to Joel? It doesn't have would to apply, apply to all of them. It's generally true. Do you apply it to the lady that you was given? I gotta go. This uh, is boring. Praise to, to the devil. My point is. We know your when point. You, it's boring. We already heard when you it. Make a broad statement and cover cover whole race because of stupid racist characters, characters, uh, caricatures. I forget. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Then you become just like the folks that you hate. How the hell, amigos? All right. Thank you, Earl. Wow. Let me talk to Chrissy in Vermont, a first-time caller. Chrissy, how are you? Hey, James. Is there feedback from the your the No. Speaker? So far, I don't hear anything bad. Oh, perfect. Hello to everybody in chat again. Um, nice. I've been on I've been on for like 20 minutes waiting, so I'm a little off subject right now. But I understand. I was wondering if you had any questions to a veteran housewife. You were talking about housewives and I was writing and commenting about not easy when you go up against, like, let's say your class reunion, and everybody's like, oh, how are you? What are you <laughs> doing for a living? And like, well, I'm, I'm a homemaker. And like, nice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No. They act like yeah. that? So you're, you, I see in the, in the section it says, you've been a housewife for 30 years and a rare mm-hmm. breed. Even, the, even yeah, a 30-year housewife? I, yeah, I was married at 21 or okay. 22. Nice. And then, uh, hi to chat. Wait, I see all, all my friends in chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then I, but I got divorced. I know it's a sin. I know, I know now. And, uh, yeah, two for two today. <clears throat> and, um, but I've been married now to 20 years to my uh, second husband. But, okay. yeah, people just really do. They really look down your nose at you. And my mother has been married to my father for 66 years as a housewife. Nice. And what she, what she always said to people who look down at you, she would say, you know, well, I, I don't need to work. My my husband does well. Right. <laughs> so that shuts them up. But anybody have any questions for housewives? I don't know if we have any questions, but mm-hmm. I respect that. That's cool. And uh, yeah, don't and let it. To... Does it ever bother you that they look down their nose at you? I stand with a high head, so not too bad. Nice. Are you in the YouTube <laughs> chat usually? Yeah, I'm right here. I was in I was in uh, Jesse too. Okay, cool. Yeah, because we have and, multiple um, different platforms. So somebody was asking which chat. That's cool. Yeah. What's your username on the chat, if you don't mind my asking? Just Chris. The what? Just Chrissy. Okay, Chrissy. Cool. Right and, on. Um, I was. Um, I wanted to talk to you talking. I think you were talking about with the pride and all that. And I'm in Vermont and in the Middlebury area. And I don't understand how we have churches up here that have BLM and pride banners all over the churches, all over the state. What does that mean? BLM means? No, I mean, mean, what does it mean to the church? How do they vote? put those things on. I know they really want to get people in, but right. they're not going to marry the gay couples in church. Yeah. You know? No, it's or terrible. They, it's Are they like, gay people, come with us, and the Lord will save you from your sin? <laughs> and I don't or think that that's they what they saying, mean. Come here and we'll marry you? Right. It's basically a kiss-up culture gone awry. Vermont is where Bernie Sanders is, right? Yeah, somebody just wrote, pronounce it, just wrote in chat, Chrissy Sanders. No, I'm a Trumper. <laughs> Trumper all the way. Isn't there another Vermont senator? And uh, aren't, Is it a bunch of liberals throughout? Patrick Leahy. Patrick Leahy, who's been since 1975 a so-called senator. He's the one who's Ew. president of this impeachment hearing, even though it's supposed to be the Supreme Court chief justice. But he, don't, he wants no part of it because it's ridiculous. That's and we have um, a mess. Phil Scott is our governor, and he's voting for impeachment. And he, oh he, really? Uh, how did he reply? How, no, how do you call it? He, we vote for him as a Republican, but he's definitely a Rhino. Yeah. You know? So not happy about that. No, I'm I'm a I'm a Vermont GOP girl. Right on. 
That's cool. Yeah, we have. Uh, I pull into school where everybody's liberal with my Trump sticker on the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, it's okay. what it's is okay. the? We like you anyway. What's the racial makeup <laughs> over there? Is it mostly like so-called white or? Okay. Well, uh, I'm originally from Mass, so when I moved here in '95, yeah, um, a lot of Puerto Ricans and Dominicans, where I'm from. Hey, oh. Mass, shout out if anybody's here. Massachusetts. And um, no, so there's probably about five percent black, maybe. Okay. And maybe even five percent Mexicans, but they work on the farms. So that means that your car is not likely to get vandalized. By having a Trump sticker on it. No, no. Well, let's <laughs> open that subject up. We got crazy white liberals. Right. Are there <laughs> Antifa? Know? Is Antifa um, there? Not that I've seen. Okay, that's Pretty good. Quiet up here. Right. I live on a mountain on a lake. <laughs> wow, very nice. Yeah, but um, okay. So I'm on a mountain on a lake. There's, I'm surrounded by rich liberals from out of state. Yeah. I have my Trump flag flying, right, roadside. <laughs> and all of a sudden, my neighbor, who has a BLM sign down the road, he's uh, like one of those educated, they have a music, a fancy music camp and stuff, and he's strange. But yeah. he wrote in, we have a local online paper that you can type into that, like, who stole my BLM sign? You know, basically, like, racist Vermonters. Right. And people would write, like, sorry, Vermonters aren't racist on the lake. You know, you're just surrounded by out of status. But anyway, my Trump <laughs> flag, come to that, then he has a meltdown outside my uh, house yelling, grab the, grab the you-know-what. Wow. The flag offends me, so... He can put up what he wants, but I can't put up what I want. And you it's know, funny because hypocrisy. because Trump is for love for everybody, and Black Lives mm-hmm. Matter is for hate for everybody. It's a that's right. It's a slur that's against right. whites, pretending whites don't care about blacks, when it's blacks who don't care about blacks. And BLM is hates blacks and whites and everybody. Yeah, definitely. What a mess. And my my granddaughter is half black. And so she's out in the road while he's sitting screaming all these obscenities. So I told him, I said, if you're up for, you know, if you're up for black and brown people, stop swearing in front of this nine-year-old. Right. You know? What like, a mess. Pull it together, messy guy. Yeah, he's a disaster. Yeah. And he, yeah. But anyway, that was <laughs> that. Rainbow flag, BLM. But, hey, I'm new to your show. Um, Brandon, Brandon turned me on to it, you know, in chat. And cool. I think it's great. That's cool. I appreciate that. Thank you, Brandon Johnson, is it? Was it Brandon Johnson? Nice. Shout out to Brandon Johnson. He's a good guy. He's always in here. Right on. Well, thank you, Chrissy. Appreciate hearing from you. you guys, everybody, God bless and have a great day. I got to go out with the six degrees out. (laughs) Man, that's brutal. Take care, Chrissy. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Six degrees, man. I was looking at the mountains because I was thinking, maybe I'm going to head up to the mountains. When it's dark in the dead of the morning, you know, with the, you know, early morning is when it's the coldest. It is 20 degrees. I was like, whoa, what's 20 degrees like? So I asked Joel and he said, you need to have a mask. I was like, whoa. And I don't know how he knew. Um, Let me quickly get to first time caller David in Brooklyn, New York is an interesting topic. What's up, David? How are you doing? Hey, 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 how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I, I'm, I'm doing well. Nice. I, I don't want to take up, take up too much of your time. I just wanted to know, because I tried to talk to Jesse uh, about two hours ago, but I couldn't connect the call for some reason. But oh, okay. uh, maybe I could get your take on this. Um, I've, I've been doing the Sunday prayer for about two years. But I, I still feel like I, I can't overcome, like, like talking to, to a woman. Like, I can't, I feel like I get, like, kind of sick. You get sick? To my stomach. To your stomach to sick talk to, to women? stomach. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, but I, but I, know I, I know I love them and I'm attracted to them because I have lust for them. But that's not but, love. But I just... I, you said you know you love them. Because you're attracted to them and you have lust for them? Is that what you said? Is that what you said? Yeah. How old are you? 26. I just turned 26 two days ago, actually. Okay. Where are you from, originally? I'm from Queens. Queens. 
Queens, New York. Okay. Yeah. Um, just be patient with yourself. Did you forgive your parents and move out and all that stuff? Fortunately, fortunately, I have my own place. I mean, I, I want to get a, an apartment for me and my mom because uh, my father passed away two two years ago. So I'm, I'm I'm thinking of getting an apartment and moving in with her. Actually, if you listen to Jesse, you know that he wouldn't be advising that. I, I know. I was going to ask him too, but I just felt like uh, maybe she's alone and she needs my she needs love and care and you know I just want her to feel like she's not by herself you know? I know but that's uh that's not your place man um necessarily right. I mean you can do that if you want to but right. I don't I don't doesn't sound like the best idea to me especially if you're yeah. wanting to start dating and stuff um it seems like that would put a damper on that you know not that you're supposed to take a girl by yourself anyways but into into your place, yeah. but uh, <laughs> you know, oh, no. uh, you, I recommend you know because it, it is it can be tough to get through onto the Jesse Lee Peterson show. This sounds more like yeah. something that you want to um, call into the office, the Bond office, yeah. and request to right. schedule some private counseling. Are you working? Yeah, I'm at work right now. Actually, oh, okay, I'm right on. Some time to talk to you. Appreciate that. <laughs> That's cool, man. So. Yeah. Yeah, just call and schedule counseling. It's there is a fee, but it's pretty affordable, and you can s- get some counseling with Jesse over a Skype or Zoom or uh, or over the phone, whatever. Okay. And yeah. half hour or full hour, whatever you right. uh, whatever you want, and um, right. you can work through this, and he can give you better advice than I can. Right. If if this okay. is what you need, you uh, know yeah, what I mean. I, I, but do yeah, what you I want, but. But um, just be patient with yourself about the about I, your I've weakness. Tr- I've tried. I've tried to. I've tried to be patient actually, but it's just like there well, is you no know, try. Like, it's, it's been two years, you know, and I, I just I just feel like I can't like I like I can't approach like women or like. I yeah, it sounds like it's them. maybe too important to you. It, it is actually. That's, yeah. that's why it kills me inside. Like not being <laughs> yeah. able to to do it. Uh, I just are you white or black of... or foreign or Hispanic or what or do you mind? No, uh, I'm actually Col- Colombian Colombian nice. Like, yeah, but my, my mom is Colombian. My father's from Uruguay Okay, and so he died, yeah. huh? Wow. He, yeah, he passed away two years ago. Okay. I love my father I, I, I have good memories and, and I, I just feel at peace with myself because I know that I was the, the best that I could be with him so you're half Colombian, half Uruguayan. Yes, sir. Yeah. But you were born in Queens. Yeah, I was born in Queens. Okay. Well, man, um, don't let it put keep you in hell. Is the best I can it, say. Do you want have any advice for him, Mister Expert? <laughs> you, have you have you heard what he's talking about? Uh, J- I mean, oh, no. James. Uh, you said it well enough that it's probably just like too important, too important for him. Right yeah. Now. This is Chris talking to you, David. What's up, oh, David? Hi, Chris. Yeah. Hi, hi. Yeah, I would. I would just, uh, you know, relax. Uh, you know, just just chill out. You know what I mean? Like it. It's not that big a deal. Um, and you know. Uh, well, so why, so Chris, why why do I make it such a big deal? That that's what I don't understand. Why why is it not big deal for like everyone else, but it is for me? Oh, it is a big deal for a lot of people. Yeah. I Anyways, mean, it's, it's oh. not it's not just it's not just you, but I mean, yeah, your your life is the only thing <laughs> that matters to you. That, that, that matters. But uh, why? Oh, I I don't know. What's your what's your relationship? What's your relationship like with your mom? Yeah, it's it's like a little like she tries to t- treat me like her, like her little son or something. And I'm already 26, but I, I've I've tried. I th- I think I told her I, like I forgive her, but I don't know. I don't. I guess I have to be more forward, more straightforward with it. Definitely don't. Definitely be honest with her. Don't uh. Okay. Don't hold back from uh, when she's wrong. You know what I mean? Because if she's treating you like that, maybe you should. I don't know. Maybe you should stay away from her, mm. but definitely be honest with her. 
it's totally up to you. Yeah. Like you're, you know, your situation better than we do. But he's, yeah. he said, he said that he wanted to uh, get an apartment with him and his mom. Yeah, she, that's he's alone. That, yeah, don't absolutely don't do that. <laughs> that having, you oh, know, no. a, again with with oh, having no. what little information oh, I do about you, just just having that sort of mindset that you would get yeah. an apartment with your mother. Then yeah, I, I can see how that would extrapolate to having problems with women. Uh, you oh, gotta, no. it, you're af- you're afraid of women in the way that you're afraid of your mother, um, oh. and you're an adult. Uh, I thought I thought about that one actually. I don't know if I'm afraid of her. I don't know if I'm afraid of her though. I think it's just. Are I, you afraid of being I'm honest afraid. with her? No, because she's a righteous woman. She's a very righteous woman. She's a <laughs> very like, oh, oh no. Is there no. such a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I actually thought about telling, telling that to Jesse and him telling me the same thing. Right, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but when it comes to my mom, she she's the type that if God told her, actually, this is one thing, to, to not wear a mask for co- like uh, for the pandemic because it wasn't for chosen it was for the 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 uh uh the non-chosen people of god i don't know she, she uh, but you can even the non-mask wearers can still be destroy their children their sons even if they're mm. well-meaning even the mm. even the dedicated christian women who hear supposedly hear from god how do you know that god told her that well, she she's told me many times. But how do you know that, it's God? God? Um, I know it's God. Uh, well, she reads her Bible and she prays every day, and I feel like she has a close relationship with with God more than I do. So I think that's where she gets her her. Um, her I you guess may not. God talks to her through you, that. Prayer, if if prayer. you don't know God, how do you know that she's close with God? Oh no! You know what I mean. How, if she's closer, how, if she's, cl- how do you know she's closer to God? If you're far from God, how do you know she's close? What were you about to say? How often do you talk to your mother? Uh, I haven't spoken to her in three weeks. I'm, I'm actually like pretty proud of myself. <laughs> Keep it up. Yeah. Keep it up. I'd highly Thank recommend you. keeping it up. Thank you. Thank you. It's. I told her what Jesse told me to. to uh, and well, I, I didn't speak to him, but I saw a video of him say, telling someone else that. Um, it, it, it try to uh, to have as little, or try to separate yourself from your mother because uh, it's their. It's an ego trip for them to try to keep their sons loving them. Yeah. So that's that's one thing I I always thought of in the back of my head. Maybe she wants to be that wants to show me her love so that it could continue loving her but i already do love her so i don't have to continue like you know physically being there next to her right and did you say that you you went and dealt with her you you know i did i i I did tell her you know you you did there's a lot of things you did i I don't think she got the message though i think she was just like well what did you say that's all that matters what did you say oh uh basically like you know, I I was very straightforward. I told her I forgave her for the, for making, uh, for you know, for making me an angry, uh, not angry. I didn't say that. I I, I said for for um, dang it, I forgot what I said. But basically, what Jesse told me to tell her, I, that's what I basically said. Did you see it for yourself that that's what you needed to do? She just like this, no. Did you um, did you see for yourself that that's what you need that what you needed to do? That mm, you were wrong for resenting. Not, 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 not real like a realization. Yeah. Did you realize that you hated her? Oh, uh, I'm, yeah. I didn't realize that a year ago. Okay. To be honest, yeah, you, I you did that. it. You did it because you saw that it was a problem, and not just because Jesse says to do it. Yeah, I, I I I thought I loved my mom because everybody, you know, in the family, everybody right. says, "Oh, 
we love each other. You know, we, we all try to like, like reassure our love for each other. <laughs> so I would always think like, okay, yeah, of course I love you. You're my mom. Or I tell her, I love you. You know, we're on the phone. I'll say, I love you. Goodbye. God bless you, mom. But, uh, yeah, then I started to like, uh, stay, be still. And then I would see like, whoa, I have this emotional feeling that of anger and resentment for my mother for 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 some, for well, for whatever reason. But I I know it's not love now. For yeah. some reason, I thought I loved her, but it wasn't love. It was it was fake love. Yep. Mm. Interesting, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, besides the the woman issue that you you think you're having, I mean, is your is the rest of your life going okay? I mean, I'm working. I have I have my own apartment in Manhattan right now. Um, I think things are going well. I mean, I'm listening to Jesse every day, so I think that's a good sign. So, um, it's it sounds like you're having a great life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got a, but you why got a job. You got why can't apartment? I approach? Why can't I approach women though? I don't. You, that'll maybe I that'll come in time, man. Like, Maybe it's maybe it's not the time. Maybe maybe that feeling that I'm getting is some sort of way of God telling me, "Hey, listen, relax. You know, you know, I'll, I'll I have your woman for you. Well, don't, y- don't go rushing for them." Are you? Is your mindset right now that, like, okay, I have a I have a job. I have my own place. I'm doing pretty well for myself. I, you know, I need a I need a woman now. Is that is that your mindset? Yeah, I feel like. It, it, it'll it'll make me feel a lot more confident and oh. little, yeah. You're not confident I, I now. Just, you you think a woman's gonna give you confidence? That's not the right kind of confidence, man. <laughs> oh, I mean, um, if she can give like, you confidence, she's gonna healthy, take away your confidence. confidence. Huh? How, how about healthy confidence? But a woman cannot give a you wo- healthy confidence. A woman's not gonna give you anything. Oh no. To be honest, I mean, you're going to, if you, you could, I could easily see, this happens to guys all the time, you're walking into a trap, getting involved with a woman, and then you're stuck with her because you uh, are dependent on her emotionally oh, or whatever. Oh She's controlling you, and then you're miserable. Meanwhile, like, you're, you're living a happy life, but you just don't know it. And, uh, I think you're right. I think you're right, Shake. I'm not. I'm not going to be too hard on myself anymore. <laughs> I'm just way too hard on myself. Yeah, I mean, be That's start amazing. start being honest and straight up with your mother on the occasion that you do talk with her, and um, then you'll grow into being straight up with women, and you won't be making them into like a god. I think that's what it is. I, I made them into a god, and I have to. Because look at how upset you are over it. It's getting to you. Yeah, but definitely, like, I have anxiety. It's, I guess, stress over it a lot. But I think, I think, I think, uh, I know drugs aren't the way. I know they're, they're not the way, but. Do you do drugs? Maybe there's. Oh, are you talking about like, anxiety medication? Yeah. I highly recommend you do not even go near that stuff. Do you take them already? No, no, I just drink tea, green tea and uh, sleep. <laughs> and what? Green tea and what? At, at, at sleep. Oh, uh, you sleep after you drink the green tea? Green tea has caffeine yeah. in it, man. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Check the label. <laughs> it could be decaffeinated. Right? I mean, you're Colombian. <laughs> Colombians drink coffee at all all hours, right? Colum- pure Colombian I drink coffee. The blood. I, drink, I drink up to three cups a day, guys. <laughs> That's no, not too bad. Sounds I mean, like you need to switch to coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Tea's not bad for you. I mean, just make sure you brush your teeth because I hear that tea can sp- stain your teeth. But yeah, you'll be f- fine, man. Just um, stay away from the pornography and st- don't get into any kind of drugs or alcohol if you're if you um, are not into it already. And just just thank you. Have self control and and you'll grow. Just relax. Just relax, man. Let me let me ask you one last thing. Um, yeah. So bes- besides women, um, if you ever have an interaction with someone that you've never met before, uh, like at a grocery store or, or anything like that, 
uh, wherever. Yeah. Do you feel do you feel the same way as if you were you were mm. talking to a woman? Like some random person asks you something, mm. or you bump into them, or you you ask them something. Do you feel the same way when you speak to a woman? Or try to? No, no. I feel, I'm way more confident. I know. I know, like, how to be social. Yeah. But with, you know, I know how to be social. It's like my personality is 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 100. percent But once I try to like, even like think about approaching a woman, it's like I have, like, all my energy goes down because I have no like, I can't wrap my head around how like to approach them and what to say. It's, it's just I'm just pathetic. <laughs> woman. Uh, All right, no. ease, ease up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out. Uh, yeah, I mean it's just a, it's just a matter of because if you can't if you can't speak to them how you would speak to anyone else, then clearly you put them on a pedestal. You put them above yourself. If when you speak to them, you you think you have to speak a certain way or, or anything, you're desiring them and you're you put them on a pedestal, and you shouldn't do that. Uh, if anything, they should look up to you. Not to boost. Yeah, no, I'm not trying I, to boost I, your confidence. You don't deserve it. But <laughs> I'm saying, you know, <laughs> you're doing just fine for yourself. So don't. I mean, don't worry about what they have to say if, if and when you speak to them. Who cares what they say? Oh, I guess that's what I'm missing. The who care deed. Like I don't have that. The who that. cares gene? Care that that <laughs> it's not genetic, yeah. dude, and it's not. It's not physical anxiety that's your problem. He just he just pointed it out. You're putting, you're judging the women as as better than you, and then later you're gonna judge them as you, you're gonna hate them, because <laughs> this is all based in, you know, your judgment. You're putting them above you, and that's what's causing yeah. the, it's partly what's causing the anxiety. I would think. Yeah, but I had to, I had to step out of the apartment. It's just too loud in there, but. But yeah, you're right. I did put. I, I do have them on some sort of pedestal, but I, I just don't know like why the emotion is so strong with them. I understand. You don't have to know why, man. You're you're just growing. Why ask why? Mm. You're, you're growing. Why ask why? Maybe hit the gym. Hit the weights. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Pick up boxing or something. Look, yeah, you're right. Boxing. Something. <laughs> Lift weights. Well, I have a big nose. I have a big nose. Uh, Me too. A what? Big? Did you say big nose? Yeah. Me too. Oh, okay. Doesn't matter. He's a, you're concerned about breaking your nose. Oh uh, yeah. That's it's funny. already gotten broken actually. So what? Doesn't matter. You think? You, are you gonna tell the per, you know when the war kicks off? Are you gonna tell the people? Don't punch me. I have a big nose. It doesn't matter. Lift weights. Learn to fight. <laughs> good point. A lot of good points. Um, but, uh, it also, before, before I let you go, I've, I've got, we've been talking more than 10 minutes, so I don't want to keep on holding you, but you're fine. There's such thing as, there's such thing as an alpha beta, Hake. Alpha, like a beta who's also alpha? Well, like, let's say like a beta who's the most alpha of the betas, basically. I mean, yes, there's always a pecking order. Yeah. So I mean, so there's going to be I, people who fool you, and and you think they're they're such great tough guys, and yet they're weak within, in certain ways. Yeah. I think I might be an alpha beta. Oh, I'll okay. Start working on that. So mm. you're so you're tough, but you're also beta. But yeah, very very vulnerable inside. But yeah, I try to <laughs> portray. Don't tell anybody. Stuff. Don't share your weaknesses. <laughs> You've already you've already oh, shared no. too much. Yeah, TMI, oh, man. No. At, at, oh no. Do you watch Church with J.C. Lee Peterson? Yeah, what I can. I mean, that, that all the time. I'll okay. Be, uh, yeah. Well, but, I wish you yeah. well, man. I and if you want the private counseling, I do recommend it. If not, you you don't necessarily have to do it because you'll see for yourself how to go. But um, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate the call. I'll Very interesting. I'll definitely look into it. I'll and let me look into it, Hank. Give us a call back too, and let us know as things develop. I I certainly will. Yeah. Thanks, thanks guys. Yeah. Thanks, thank you. Chris. Yeah. No problem. Thanks, Joel. Joel thanks. says you're welcome. I think <laughs> he stepped oh. away from the desk. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Keep nice to hear from you. Keep black. <laughs> Keep <laughs> <true>. <laughs>
<laughs> Take care, David. All right. Hey, God All right. bless you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. It'll be interesting. People are saying troll. That's funny. Hot Computer Smell says, with a super chat, I think I'm going to skip the break because I skipped it. Hot Computer Smell gave a super chat on streamlabs.com slash the hate report and said, I look forward to Joel weighing in on angry callers. It's entertaining and he seems to hold his own pretty well. Yeah. Nice. Appreciate that. Hot Computer Smell. By the way, I got to give a hat tip to the Trovo supporters. Shout out to Brandon M, Dark Side of the Bear What, Severio, Saverio Jones, Cheesehead69, The Hake Report, <laughs> Lin Yen Chin, Brandon M, I think I already said, Shaggy Boy, I think I might have already said, Cobra Koi99, Marcus Jones Stinks, Twin Crier, Total No Neck, thank you guys for all the support on Trovo.live slash The Hake Report. Trovo is... Kind of interesting because they banned Jesse Lee Peterson for a day. What? Doesn't even make sense. Um, I got a... The lines are full, but real quick, since I mentioned it, and I didn't get a chance to present it in Hake News, very briefly, you, probably, you guys probably know more about this woman than I do. Gorilla Glue Girl. The woman who put... As I, I gather, she put Gorilla Glue in her hair to keep it down. And I have a clip of this TikTok video because this is a TikTok woman. And there she is in the emergency room, a white woman fixing her hair or trying to. I think the, white, I think the ER people were at a loss what to do. But she posted this on her Instagram. This uh, woman is named Tessica Brown and she goes by little old... Little old lady? Something like that? I don't know. But, uh, I think this might be her. Joelle is showing the picture of her with some young men who might be her sons. And I think she's 40. Doesn't that look like she's celebrating her 40th birthday? 40 years old. Being so foolhardy as to put Gorilla Glue in her hair. So I have this little clip from her... She tells the story um, of what happened to her hair, and it's like a month later, and oh my gosh. If you're watching the video, I'll try to describe it for the people listening online. But this is a black woman named Tessica Brown. You have clip 11? It's inside that folder, actually. You may see it. Uh, Oh, there's not? Let me check. The Hake Report. Oh, maybe, maybe it was dragged in after I dragged it in, but I didn't see it in the folder. Oh, probably, maybe you dragged it in before I, uh, before it was completely pulled, it, pulled in? Maybe so. It's no, it's there. I see it. It's inside of the Gorilla Glue Girl folder, actually. I see it in that folder, but not in the one I dragged in. Oh. Oh, okay, it just looks like a picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, put it, I did it, I did things a slightly differently, so it might have thrown off, thrown them off. Anyway, so if, you, if you're ready for it, let's play this Gorilla Glue girl talking on her TikTok. She has like a bunch of tens of thousands. Maybe she got a bunch of followers from this viral situation. But listen to this girl talking about this situation that she put herself in. Hey y'all, for those of y'all that know me know my hair has been like this for about a month now. <laughs> it's not by choice. No, it's not by choice. When I do my hair, I like to, you know, finish it off with a little got to be glue spray. You know, just to keep it in place. Well, I didn't have any more got to be glue spray, so I used this. <laughs> She's showing a Gorilla Glue spray can. Bad, spray adhesive. Bad, bad idea. <laughs> Yo, look, my hair, it a don't move. A month later? You hear what I'm telling you? It don't move. And she's clapping. 15 times and it don't move. She's washed her hair 15 times and it still looks like that. My hair. So I'm going to tell y'all like this. If you ever, ever run out of got to be glue spray, don't ever, (laughs) ever use this. Unless you want your hair to be like that. (laughs) 
That is crazy. So she was showing her empty can of some, a hair product called Got to Be Glued Spray. And uh, I'm familiar with the Got to Be product. I don't use anything, right? I don't use anything. Just water. <laughs> and she washed, yeah, as Medora says, she only washes her hair 15 times a month then. I don't know, that's pretty decent. 30 days, every other day, right? <laughs> Maybe? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, whites use the got to be stuff to spike their hair. This woman put it to basically make it look like her hair was essentially painted on because it's like m- mashed down on her head, tight. And she's washed it 15 times and it still looks like it's freshly matted down. O- over a month. That's got to be a weird feeling. Joel? <laughs> I just have a question. So is, is that product, the, the Gorilla Glue product, is that a, a specific type of hair product? Or no. Or did she just literally... Gorilla so Glue... What, is for yeah I, I know I've heard it well I mean it's it's strong glue but <laughs> yeah they have it in the form of a hairspray bottle type but it's not it's a hairspray bottle it's just a spray adhesive but see that's what I'm trying to understand <laughs> because naturally anybody would know right you know so I'm trying to make sense for it for her why she would even try to do that because that just doesn't make any gorilla glue it, you would know right off the bat right do not use yep. <laughs> so, somebody, one of her excuses was, and Gorilla Glue actually ended up tweeting about this because she put it out on social media, help, and I think she got an attorney, according to TMZ, uh, uh, is she going to need to sue? How do you sue Gorilla Glue for using something that everybody knows you right. don't use, you don't even want Gorilla Glue on your skin. It's super glue. You don't want super glue on your skin. Some people say pa- paint thinner works or turpentine. Windex. Windex that hair. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but, uh, yes. Um, Gorilla Glue tweeted about this situation and said, So sorry to hear about, let me see if I can find it. We are sorry to hear about this unfortunate incident that Miss Brown experienced using our spray adhesive on her hair. We are glad to see in her recent video that Miss Brown has received medical treatment from her local medical facility and wish her the best. And then she put out, they put out this statement, Gorilla Glue did. It's a company. We used to use Gorilla Glue for, like, cabinets to fix stuff. It's almost like wood glue, only it's probably even, maybe even stronger than wood glue. We are aware of the situation, are very sorry to hear about the unfortunate incident Miss Brown experienced using our spray adhesive on her hair. This is a unique situation because this product is not indicated for use in or on hair, as it is considered permanent. Our spray adhesive states in the warning label, do not swallow, do not get in eyes, on skin, or on clothing. It is for craft, home, auto, or office projects to mount things on surfaces such as paper, cardboard, wood, laminate, or fabric. We are glad to see that she uh, got medical treatment. So, they're acting like... (laughs) They're acting like uh, she could possibly sue them because she saw in the label it said, multi-use. It also said multi-use. <laughs> and it doesn't say don't use in hair. It says don't use on skin. And it looked like it might have gotten on her skin because that hair was tight down on her skin. <laughs> black, well, blacks tend to... I've known, I've seen this a lot in, in, in black homes. Uh-huh. Is They tend to use certain things for multi-use. Right. A lot of things. Vaseline will get used for lotion, yep. chapstick, ha- Hair gel. <laughs> so she probably was thinking, the well, then we could just try to... <laughs> right. No, no. <laughs> but now it's this big victimhood thing because there was this article written in, like, USA Today that, oh, black women, this, uh, what is the line? Gorilla Glue hairspray story shows issues with black beauty care. And this woman who used to, I think she still does, she's a co-host on The View, Sonny Hostin, nasty woman, said, So many people are being dismissive of hashtag Gorilla Glue Girl. Given the history of how black women are targeted, what's she talking about? And still battle the pervasive belief that our natural hair is unprofessional, which it is, unkempt, which it is, when they're talking about afros, 
or in some way a statement, which it so often is. Give me a break. You're lying when it, you say it's not a statement most of the time. Please show her some grace and understanding. And so I guess people are being kind of nasty towards her, maybe. But she's trying to... I mean, this whole fake victimhood thing, it just makes people's eyes roll. And she was acting like she needed to get an attorney. I mean, the woman is desperate. Can you imagine, like, your hair doesn't move? It's like a shell, like your, your scalp cannot breathe, maybe? I don't know, maybe her hair would grow out a little. Chills. Chills. <laughs> it's terrible. Duh. She's 40 years old. Six children, I heard. I think she has six children. From previous relationship. Apparently not married. Maybe her, if she were married, her husband would have said, No, don't use Gorilla Glue. <laughs> Hopefully. She has two sons named Quiz and Big Blitz. I guess they're YouTubers. That's how we know their names. I don't think that they were actually named that. I hope. I hope she didn't name her children. Well, Quiz, I could see that being, okay, it's a black name. It sounds like a name. But Big Blitz? <laughs> Hopefully that's not her child's first name. Anyway, she's a TikToker. TikTok. Crazy. Oh, there was some interesting information that I came across about this woman. She has had... I don't want to say something that's not true. On April 5th, 2017, she was arrested in Violet for simple battery. Okay, whatever. Who hasn't been arrested for simple battery? Not me, but she's from Louisiana. I don't know how somebody came across that information, but when you go viral, people get very interested in your personal life. So they looked into it, and yes, she <laughs> was arrested. But she w doesn't say anything about a conviction, so maybe she was innocent. Framed. So, so often, right? Happens to blacks. <laughs> Mother of five or six. In uh, Violet, St. Bernard Parish, Louisiana. Tessica M. Riley, or Riley Brown. What a mess. Anyway, I had to present that to you. Sonny Hostin is a mess. Sonny Hostin being the liberal media per personality. Terrible. Let me talk with my favorite caller, Maze, in Dayton, Ohio. How are you doing, Maze? Hello, James. Hey. Now you complain about hair. <laughs> I'm not complaining. You don't want to have a long conversation about nobody's hair. I do not. Please. I do not have if any, uh... If she didn't understand... I do not envy her. Gorilla Glue was not for her hair. That's her problem. And she's the only woman, woman that used it. So we're not going to worry about that. You know what? I, I hear that there's a salon that. owner that uses Gorilla Glue on customers' hair. Well, maybe they do. Maybe she added water or something to it, and she didn't know what to do, and she put too much. Yeah. Apparently. So, well, what's the big wow. deal about it is what I'm wondering. It's a viral, funny story. Oh. Um, Anything to go viral... Only thing she probably gonna make some money from it. Oh yeah, she had. Oh my gosh, she so now, earned now, supposedly like nine thousand dollars from her, like a GoFundMe, from this. Right. Hopefully that covered it. <laughs> but then, and then so I got a video from my my Caucasian friend. Nine thousand dollars, James, for being she silly enough. Video. But anyway, you she's probably my entertaining. Name? Anyway, my Caucasian, my Caucasian friend sent me a video of the snow killing. Have you seen that? Snow killing. Yes. There was somebody who got killed in the snow, or what? What are you talking about? Yes, they call it a snow killing. It just says snow. Is that about killing white people or something? Black on white crime? What is um, it? I, just put it up and look at it yourself. I no, like come on. To, you, I like for people to see with their own eyes, and I don't. And uh, I, I'm not. I refuse to look into it. You're not my boss. Oh, I don't. I just think you had you heard about it. Tell us about it, Maze. Don't be rude. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, why I need to tell you? Because you because you brought it, you it up. It Usually, when a when a when a caller when normal callers call in and they tell me about a story, they'll tell me a little bit about what happened. Well, I'm not normal because I don't do. I, that's for sure. So do you get that? Do you think you're smarter than, than Tucker Carson? I'm talk, talk smarter than you. It's a good question. Or I think he he's pr he's you? brilliant. To you, and you think Sean Hunter is smarter than you, or he can think for you? Um, Sean Hannity is pretty smart too. That's not the question that I asked you. Smarter than me? I don't know. Okay, so. so you maybe. Can't yeah, maybe oh, no, in yeah. certain ways, for sure. Yeah, and then there was another uh, one about the football player. I know you heard about that one. 
that beat his girlfriend to a pole. Oh, she had to no, the that's, no, I didn't hear about that. A football player um, got in a fight with his girlfriend and he beat her? No, no, he, he won? Her. No, they didn't get in a fight. He just beat her. <laughs> How do you know? You, were, you th- were you there, Mace? No, I just looked at the article. You can't believe an article. Where you been? Where have you been? I don't always like look you, at stories. It's just, like you saw, it's just like you saw the girl in the ho- at, the, at the hospital getting her hair taken, the stuff taken out of her hair. This was, oh, this lady that we, were, we have been hearing about Gorilla Glue Girl for days, if not mm-hmm. longer. Well, this was and it finally, gorilla. finally I looked into it. Just this two days. This before the Gorilla Girl. Huh? Gor- and, gorilla and Glue before. Girl. Don't, this she's was, not a gorilla, Maze. The glue is, Racist. that's the name of the glue. <laughs> have you seen the glue? Yeah, I have. I've used it. Okay, then we, we don't, let's not get confused. But I'm saying this <laughs> happened before that. So where y'all been? Y'all always coming up with all other kind of news, and you got uh, the, the spooks always There's bringing a, your news. The spooks. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going I on in the world, Mace. Why, mm-hmm. why are you always calling in criticizing the stories I pick? No, I'm not about the stories. I sometimes I, present you, stuff that you bring. You're yeah, like, you oh, I, I bet you're going to be talking about this. I'm like, I bet not. And then sure enough, I'm talking about it the next day. But James, you know, I told you, I said, it's Trump. I told you Trump was going to lose. And, and I said, if he lose, I want you to give us a whole week of Caucasian news. You haven't done it yet. I do not remember that. How long has it been? You don't? Ermia said that she, he was, who was? Allegedly bipolar? The, the guy, the football player who got in, either got oh, in the fight or beat up his girlfriend? Oh, the one that beat up his girlfriend? He was bipolar. That's an excuse. It's not an excuse. <laughs> it's, it's the worldly excuse, but. Okay. Because the one that beat up the one. But it's not an LA excuse when, when people, people today, Maze, if you, you, as you well know, they have mental, spiritual okay. problems. Oh, and they're evil. Oh, that's y'all excuse. That's not an excuse, Maze. That's I already said that. Use. Are you dense? Okay. I gotta go. No, I'm not. But anyway, as I was saying, since you don't know about it, we can't discuss it. Right. And I don't like to discuss things that people haven't seen. Or okay. Leo's or either. Neither okay. have you. You haven't but seen it either. You friends, just read the next article. Time my, next time my Caucasian friend send me something else, I'll, I'll have you look it up and see if she tells me the truth or it's a fake. All right, Maze. Y'all believe in fake news. Right. This this has been thoroughly confusing. Uh-huh. I know it's confusing, but she gave it to me, so I was wondering. You're the one who's confusing. You've asked me four different questions. I told you that's about Caucasian Seemingly unrelated. Them. You're like, is Tucker okay. Carlson smarter than you? Is Sean Hannity smar- smarter than you? No follow-up. No context. No, was, no explanation for why you're asking that. And then so, you talk you about want- this story. Why are you talking about Gorilla Glue Girl? That's but her I problem. About- and, then you, about- and then you try to tell me about some football player that I've never heard of and don't know anything about, okay. as if it's my business, that's their problem. Oh, it's not Maze? your business. <laughs> Evidently somebody in the chat room know they said something about he got he was bipolar. No, that's not a chat room. Whatever it is. Thank you. See, you assume stuff. Thank you, Maze. Mm-hmm. Nice talking with you. But anyway, James, as I say, you always talk about criminals, and you always talk about how criminalized black people are. If you don't know any, that's the way you're going to feel. Well, if you know some, and just like we know you, just like we know plenty of you people. Mark, we know plenty of you people, too. <laughs> we have them in our family. <laughs> you don't know yourselves, though. <laughs> Did they don't know the things you think we don't know. We know a whole lot more than you think we do. Because the old people that went into that but capital. They, but your knowledge doesn't even, do any good. You have no love. You can't even face that them criminals went into that capital and did what they did to harm them, to harm False. the government. False. We already covered that. Nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. It's the capital yes, they, they did. Went they into. did have Black Lives Matter there. It was proven. I'm not. You just you had a guy with a Black Lives Matter shirt on. Did no, he with? was not a Black Lives Matter shirt. He was a Black mm-hmm. Lives Matter Antifa activist. Well, well, whatever. Antifa. Anybody else? Y'all put something in the place of what was really. He was black. He it. was mixed so, race, light skin black because if you say you don't see something that means anyway it, it, it didn't happen That's this is a, y'all do you're something. silly you're a silly woman yeah, why well, i gotta be silly i'm not calling you names but you, you are you're angry you're angry stop being angry be- uh whatever anyway let me i got the lines full let me talk with trick in montana trick what's up good to hear from you good to hear from mr hake woke up this morning are you talking about the Bachelor show? <laughs> and they said, I'm going to call in. Okay. So um, these are my observations, and I wanted to um, kind of use you as a sounding board because I'm up here in northwest Montana and um, in the back country. Uh-huh. And there's a couple of things um, on black culture that I've observed the last, probably the last 20 years, but they've come into focus the last, couple years um 
segregation. I think there's a, a double standard. And what I mean by that is, um, like, when you go into the cities, you'll see places, you, you know, you can't go or you're not welcome. You don't feel safe. So right. there's this idea that, you know, we have our places, but we can go wherever we want, but you can't go wherever you want. Yeah. So in a lot of those places, you don't want to go anywhere anyways, because there's not like great restaurants or whatever, and they're just not places you want to go. So true. Um, but that's something that I see. The other thing that hits me is um, with black urban culture is this whole, I almost call idolatry of entertainment. Yeah. And um, it's more than just the urbans. Not, it's the educated yeah, ones too. They're like that too. And it's not all black, but it's just right. you see a lot with the blacks. And I and I I, I talk to because I I have a lot of black friends. I served in the military. A lot of black friends. We talk, and it's like with the Ch- the guy in Seattle, Chaz. So they want to start their their like utopia, and it's oh, like the, place. the basic. Yeah, the, ch- yeah, the yeah. So that those are that was Antifa. Yeah, but yeah, that was Antifa. <clears throat> but uh, the point I'm getting at is. You look at this stuff and you're like, and you look at like jobs that have to be done, like plumbing and heating and electrical and construction and waste management. Yep. And it's, it's, do these people not understand that you have to have that stuff or you're not going to have <laughs> any civilization? Right. So there's this whole, there's this whole idea that they don't comprehend what it takes to have civilization. And you're looking at it and you're like, you know, I'm down for your utopia if you can make it happen. But no, you know, I'm you not. gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta have plumbing. The pl- no, no. What I'm saying is, you gotta have plumbing. Right. You gotta have restaurants. You gotta keep the electricity running. And it's like, you know, LeBron James ain't doing that. You know. True. So it's, you look and and I and yeah. I'm all for entertainment. Good point. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So you see this, and when you're stand off, <laughs> and I've lived in the cities, but when you had like three years here in Montana, and you look, and you're like. Well, who's taking the garbage out? It's like downtown LA now or San Francisco. Like, don't you know those, those jobs have to be done? So there's, there, it's like a fantasy realm. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, you're looking at it and it's like, what's going on here? And, you know, a lot of people are seeing that and they're just like, you know, I'm not going into those places. You know, you know what's going on in the Bay Area in, in LA. So I don't know if that's understood. I mean, I think a lot of those rich, um, uh, black sports guys, they should get their money together, hire some former black military guys, and start some trade schools and some homes for these kids. And, um, you know, if you're good at basketball or singing or anything, that's great, too. You know, rock on. But they need to have an understanding of what makes things work, like farming. Yeah, but that's, I mean, their issue is more spiritual than, than that. The, the practical skills are excellent. Trump was good at, at bringing jobs for them and all that stuff. That's nice, and it does help because a lot of times, if you don't have a job, you're just a whole idle. Idle hands are the devil's workshop, and the devil is busy in the black community. And so it is good for them to be working and stuff, and it builds character. But um, they need the truth. They don't have any truth coming in because even the educated ones. LeBron James started a dumb school. And it, it, LeBron James is evil, a liar. Yeah, that come with dumb games. So the bottom <laughs> line is, is, is it, there's no fathers. That's the bottom line. I mean, that's a big part of it. It's a big part of it. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I just we think have they're, fathers they're, in the, the men, many of the people, many of the fathers that they have, they're evil fathers. Look at ta Coates brainwashing his son. And writing whole books, so-called open letters to his son, pushing the racism lie. So, so a, a, fa- a physical father in himself is not the whole solution. They uh, need I truth. totally agree. And I look totally at whites. Agree. Whites I have totally... more fathers, but we're we're losing the fathers. But we're also like, they're the fathers are weak too. Men are weak. Well, it's a matriarchal culture now. So the, but that's all true, and I, I, I agree with you. I just don't know how, even <laughs> despite all of that, that you look in a situation <clears throat> in, in an area and you start doing something 
and you're like, okay, we just destroyed our restaurants and the stores we shop at. Right. You, just materialistically, how do you exist? Yeah. I mean, that's communism for you. There's, there's more to destroy where that came from. <laughs> yeah, I, right on. I just yeah. want to make those comments. It's Appreciate what I'm that. Seeing and, yep, have a good day. Good to hear from you, Trick. Appreciate you. I got to get to Lucas in Alhambra. He has a good Trader Joe's story. Lucas in Alhambra, California. What's up, man? How are you? Hey, hey. How hey. are you doing? Can you hear me well? I'm getting all kinds of background noise. Background noises. Yeah, um, yeah. because I just took the bus. I, um, so I, I wanted to talk about the, uh, the, the girl that talked about Trader Joe's and that she had a problem. Situation. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much, um, I went to Trader Joe's as well in the Grove in uh, West LA, and yeah. nothing like that happened to me. That happened to her. Oh, so you uh, went we, no mask? Yeah, no mask, and um, they actually let us cut the line from the outside because there was a line wrapped around the building, and there was also a line uh, um, inside, and we actually shot with no mask, and they were very cordial. And that, I think that's Trader Joe's. Um, that's their main, like their main thing. They're they're supposed to always help help out every single customer. Sorry, Is okay, I'm just loud? getting out of the bus. That's why you heard. That's why you heard the noise because I was in the bus. Sorry, I didn't know I was going to be on for an hour. Too and loud. Half, too but, loud. Uh, okay, now it's good now though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we went inside. We got we got our own line. They made us our own line. We skipped the whole line. And um, I wanted to really talk about. I'm not going to share Pulling anything. Down a little bit more I'm too, not trying to. I think. I was I'm just having Joel to... turn you down a little because it's coming in hot. Oh. Anyway, go. Okay. On. Yeah, and I'm not trying to promote anything or anything, but I would love um, those people that call. Um, I we have a group. We have a group in in um, in California. It's like about like 60 people right now, but it, but it's a secret group. It's on a different platform, a different app. It's not like Facebook, Instagram, or anything. And we also, I also am part of a group that's like kind of worldwide but it's only about like 600 people right now um so it would be amazing if these people that are really you know serious about this COVID thing and stopping it and the anti-mask thing it'd be amazing if i can get that out there but i, I i'll send it to you i guess or your email yeah, or send, something like send that. me an email the hake report at gmail.com and if that woman wants to send me it i'm not really into this um anti-mask activism so it's if you guys want to do that that's on you it's nothing to do with yeah. me or jesse yeah but, yeah, um, no, no, yeah most, send me an email to hate report at gmail.com and if that yeah, lady wants to get in touch with you yeah. she can send me a an email well, the hate the report at yeah, gmail.com the reason why the reason why i say that because she's in a legal problem right now and we have um in in the california group we have three lawyers and one doctor in, in the whole group we have about like maybe 10 lawyers that are specifically like like going at this, especially this one guy. I'm not gonna say his name, but but she yeah, doesn't have legal lawyer. problems right now. Oh, okay. Well, just in case, I'm just saying like if, if she wants to get into that. legal problems, she can. <laughs> yeah. But right now, well, there's because, no legal problem. It's just that um, they're discriminating against her based on alleged comments that she doesn't even know what she said, and they're saying she can't yeah. come to their store. She's banned from a store, but that's not a legal yeah, problem. See, if she wants yeah, to but, sue, but, then she has legal problems. <laughs> yeah, but she can also make money off of that, is what I'm saying, um, as well. Uh, it but, may, it, yeah, we it may be, it may or may not be advisable to do that. Yeah, yeah, but but we we do have a like my my setup that my my group that I'm doing. I know maybe I'm saying too much, maybe I'm not, but we do have like a lot of people in in this group, um, and we are activists, and we are actually winning. We're not losing. We're winning. Um, now they're trying to arrest people, but that's not working because the cops can't arrest. They do. They they have arrested about maybe a couple of us, but then um, now now they are they're getting like legal cases thrown against them in California, specifically in LA and West LA, and um, yeah. So I, I went to the Trader Joe's in the Grove. Uh, it, it's I'm telling you right now, it's it's really easier than it looks. It looks like, like, oh, we can't fight the government or we can't fight the establishment because, you know, oh, you're not supposed to wear masks. You're going to get arrested. There, it's, it's just a facade. It's just a, a, like a picture. It's not, we're not really going to get arrested. We're not really going to get fined. It's just to scare us to wear the mask, yeah. to get the vaccine, 
to, and they're trying to force it. So I know I'm. I'm so how were you? So you yeah. went into Trader Joe's. How how did it go? I'm curious how that oh, went down. It was it was so funny because we first of all there was a big line outside waiting to go inside, but we mm-hmm. all just walked right in. We all just walked right in without the mask. We started shopping. Like, see, we don't just go into the the markets. So it's who's we? Like, oh, how many look. of you? How many of you are there? I don't know. There's like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna lie to you. There's around forty. All right. <laughs> but there there's there's a lot of us. There's a lot. No, of I'm us. talking about we went into Trader Joe's. Forty people okay. went into Trader Joe's. Yeah, that that day there was about thirty eight, thirty eight or forty people went into Trader day. Joe's and skipped the yeah, line. Went into Trader Joe's. Yeah, skipped the whole line that's waiting outside, and um, and then there were, there was even the same long line was in inside, you know, waiting to go to you know to the cashier. And we just shopped, and we waited in that line, but all the Trader Joe's employees were, like, escorted us to an open line, and, like, we had our own line. We had our own Trader Joe's line. That way you're far away from the people who wear the masks. Yeah, so we literally just skipped the whole thing, and we did. and, and And when we went outside, we had all our groceries. Like we go in there to shop. We don't just go in there to be dicks, you know. We go in there. Oh, sorry, I said that. Uh, we we go in there to shop. Sorry, I'm so sorry, I said that. But um, we went outside and we're like, why don't you guys do the same thing? We're trying to like encourage people to do the same thing because we literally just got our our uh, groceries and right. came outside in the matter of five minutes instead of waiting in the line because of social distancing and all that. Wow, and, um, that's that is crazy. That's interesting. Yeah. Anyway, man. Yeah. Um, can I say one more thing? Yeah. Can I say one more thing? All right. I want to say um, I want to say what's up with what's up, Chris? Again, uh, I, I saw him at at uh, the flats, the flats a, a, a month ago, I think, or a couple of weeks ago. Chris I disavows. Just say what's up again? No, yeah, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm I was just, the white guy. I'm totally I the playing. White guy <laughs> I don't know. I was the white guy with the Trump hat. No, I saw him at a restaurant uh, oh, okay. over there <laughs> at the flats. I think you know what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. I just want to say what's up with him. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Interesting, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for the story, yeah, Lucas. Yeah, no, most definitely. Most okay. definitely out. So you said the Hake Report at G- uh, what? gmail.com. Gmail.com? Okay. You got yeah. it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lucas. Wow. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I, I know another person who... Um, was like, I can't wear a mask, it, it messes up w- w- with my breath. And they took him out of line and let him right in. <laughs> and then, so he, he didn't even do it as a, necessarily a protest, he was just asserting his independence, and I know, <laughs> that's what I was thinking of, I was like, mm. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, so, I, I mean, be independent, but, whatever. Be smart, guys. Be smart. And don't be uh, making enemies unnecessarily. Let me talk to Tony in California. What's up, Tony? How are you doing? Hey, Hank. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing just great, sir. Good. I was, I was calling. I heard you talking about uh, Becky and, uh, <laughs> and Karen, people calling the police and... Concerned about their neighborhood. Why are you using you know, racial slurs, Tony? Why are you well, using anti-white I mean, racial slurs? Well, that's in your book. Because, because you not is it, is you a, is a Becky? Days, what's you, a Becky? A Becky is a, somebody that wanted to call the police and all in somebody's business that they should not be in their business and call the police for nothing. Or call and what's the a Karen? And, minute, and, minute, and you minute, said minute, it's, minute, a, minute, it's minute. someone, but you mean a white woman. Well, yes, they are a white woman or a white man. Or so it's a slur. Our uh, uh, individual, that's, uh, that's a European. It's okay? a racial slur. You hate white people. Okay. No, but that's in your book. No, in you do book. hate white people. But, but the thing is, All right. the, for, for your history, for the European history. What about, hey, Tony, Polish, hey, Tony, you're calling in yeah. about, you're calling in about whites calling cops on, on blacks and accuse, over nothing, right? That's yes, all you yes. people do is is cry racism and murder against well, cops well, well, and whites well, who are just doing their okay. own thing, and they just okay, they have I, the freedom of speech, I, or yeah, for example, speak? or for example, uh, former officer Darren Wilson, obviously killed Mike Brown in self defense, and the whole lynch mob is crying murder and racist murder, which is even way worse than murder. <laughs> In their deluded minds. So give me a break with this 
white people being a little sus- maybe a little over suspicious at times. No harm, no foul, Tony. You're petty. But can I give you the history? Can I give you the history? You're petty. The, the, okay, whatever. Can, I, mean, well, I mean, why do you keep cutting me out? Because you don't want me to tell the, tell the truth on y'all. Is that, that what it is? As Earl said, the people who okay. don't have an argument always say they're telling the truth. Okay. So that's well, you. Well, you well, just well, you don't know what you're talking about. You just claim to be telling yeah, the truth. It, when you're on deal, record man. lying on the Jesse Lee in Peterson show... You even admitted to making stuff up on the Je- this guy. This guy even admitted to making stuff up on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. Anyway, go for it. Emmett Till is dead. Uh, Don Crawford is dead. Uh, Tamara Rice is dead. Uh, let me see. And several hundred. Hey, hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. How do you know it was a? No, hold on, Tony. How do you know that white people called the police on Tamir Rice? How do you know it was a white guy? You don't. You don't. And, and, Tony, Tony, the woman who, the woman who got, um, Emmett Till allegedly killed did not call the police. She did not call the police. Uh, She she called a lynch mob. She called a lynch mob. She called two guys. Two guys. Two guys is not a lynch mob, Tony. 200 people showed up. I don't know. If that's true, I don't know. I didn't hear about that. I I thought it was two guys. I understand, but the thing is, the thing is, sir, so is you this. have so you have three stories, and then John Crawford was pointing a fake, Wait. realistic looking gun at people in Walmart, all black. No, he in bl- he was a black you. guy, tell and that looks suspicious. And it looks suspicious. And I don't know if it was a white person who called the cops on him. And there are many t- cases where blacks call the cops on blacks, and the black gets killed because he's acting out of control. What a mess. Anyway, Tony. Nice talking yeah, with you. See, why, why, why don't you tell the truth sometimes? I do tell the truth all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? They Thank you. you your, your song is lie, lie, lie. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> all right, you too. Interesting. Canon Hinent. Tony's a black KKK. I don't know. <laughs> Let me get to... I'm, like, trying to get to everybody. Uh, art in Ohio. Art... <laughs> What's up? Hey, how you doing, Mike? I'm fine. How are you? Hey, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm sorry. I got to get you off speakerphone. I'm sorry about that. No worries. Yeah, uh, I was about to say, did you hear about the, uh, was that Al Sharpton's wife uh, trying to get a divorce from you? You know what? I had not heard about that until I saw what you're calling about, and I just uh-huh. searched it right now. I won't say Google. Um, uh-huh. And... I'm seeing these headlines from Daily News and Yahoo News and New York Post, and they're saying uh, so-called Reverend Al Sharpton files for divorce from his estranged wife after 17 years of separation. So they're saying Al Sharpton is getting the divorce, not his wife. Oh, shut up. What? <laughs> so I don't know. Well, Sue, that's what she get. When she, I mean, you lay with a dog, you get fleas. I mean, that's, I mean that ain't that what... You know what I mean? That wasn't real on his part. You know what I mean? But I can't. I don't know. He probably got. She. She might be a liberal. You know how the liberals is. Uh, I, mean, I don't know how you could not be if. I mean, she's been estranged from him after for seventeen years, separated, or fifteen anyway. He's only sixty six. Anyway, Kathy Jordan. Kathy Jordan Sharpton. Almost two decades after the couple split in two thousand four, after twenty four years of marriage. According so, to don't this, ex- I don't know what a mess. I'm confused. Don't don't, est- don't estrange mean that they uh they ain't they been married but they haven't been like living together. Or something. Right, they've been separated and they don't like each other. That's what estrange usually means. They have two daughters together, Dominique and Ashley Sharpton. They first what met in the, the 70s. Worked as James Brown's road manager and Kathy's the the backup singer. They what a mess. <laughs> yeah. You can say that again. So, so check this out. So, uh, what about that that gorilla that gr- that gorilla glue uh, beta? Hold on, hold on. Yes, that's a great story. But hold on, the civil rights activist and MSNBC star has been in a relationship with Aisha McShaw. This is the gossip, right? The personal stylist from Westchester since 2013. Sharpton or Kathy, sh- neither. They did not immediately respect, respond to request, requests for comment. Wow, that's a mess. Uh, 
Anyway, uh, what about the- I, I gotta take some screenshots and give these to Joel to show <laughs> of, uh, Al Sharpton. Hold on one sec. Anyway, yeah, you were talking about the Gorilla Glue Girl. Here's some pictures oh. for the people watching. Uh, I'm dragging them in now. It may take a second. Hopefully. I'll let you know when they're in. Okay. They're in. Screenshots on the outside of that folder. Uh, Chris says, tell Lucas I said what's up. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, yeah. What's up uh, with that? Yeah. What do you want to talk yeah, to say about the Gorilla Glue beta woman? <laughs> yeah, well, check. My thing is this, though. Uh, just like May said, uh... I don't see what the big deal is. We all liberals don't never see what the big deal. Y'all don't got a uh, no nothing tick in y'all's brain, so y'all yeah. don't never see nothing wrong with anything. It's it is something wrong with that because you got natural hair, and your hair is already naturally dirty. We already know this because you can watch the little commercials and say how much it says they uh, pr- make a new product <laughs> that actually cleans all the the product, the uh, follicles out of your hair because your hair has so much dirt that accumulates naturally in it. Right. Why would you? Why would you go put synthetic horse hair, meaning weave, Yikes. this genetically not yours that can have follicles in it? Then after you do that, you put glue <laughs> on it. Then after you do that, you keep it in your head for a month. Now, what type? What part of that says? That is a female that's uh, washing her body, a female that's sane, a female that uh, just, you have to be a looney tune. Like, that's like somebody walking around with this, a dude walking around with the same underwear on for a whole month. You see well, what I'm saying? Well, she tried to wash it out 15 times because well, she no, knew that, I think she knew that she made a mistake. Well, listen, I'm saying as far as with the whole process of weed, they be putting that glue yeah. in their hair for oh, the yeah. weave and all that. Oh, she interesting. She just did that. Good point. She, yeah, she just did that because she thought she was doing some little the liberal style, just like these states think. I don't, we're like, and that's Terrible. what I'm saying, and, that, and that's just, and that's, they from Louisiana, and there was another <laughs> dude who glued his lips, glued a cup to his lips from Louisiana. Oh, like, man. what are they teaching, what are they teaching y'all in the school that y'all don't know what glue means? Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, do y'all need us? A, 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 and then the, the Gorilla Glue people, they, they wrote a letter out to you apologizing. The people who wrote that apology letter, they laughing at y'all. Yeah, that's true. Because they're like, who would, ever, kid, who would ever think we would have to make a, a apologize to some a 40-year-old lady I know. and a 40-year-old retarded man to glue the cup to his lip. Uh, we sorry that y'all didn't read this, and y'all don't know what the term <laughs> glue means. Right. And you going all the... And then you all going all over on, on TV looking like a big old clown. And they this is what the liberals do. They promote the clownness. And, and, and yeah. the person who uh, did the person who did the gluing or whatnot, y'all are this crap. Y'all ain't. I mean, you know ain't nobody what? looking up to you. Go ahead, I'm listening. They're making they're making it out like blacks are victims because there's there's not that many products to deal with black hair. They're saying there's issues with black beauty care, and there's not what, enough what, products. <laughs> there's plenty listen, of products. Listen, Hank, listen, listen, Hank, no, the problem is these females be having their own natural hair, but they so lazy, their moms don't teach them how to cook, clean, maintain. They don't even want to take care of their own real hair. Yeah. So they just want a quick fix, and so they want to go put pay a whole bunch, $400 for fake hair that you got when you got real hair. Hey, man, God bless you. Everybody know what I'm talking about. Hey, you have a good one. Uh, have a good week, uh, Hank. Hey, and we still rocking with Trump. Nice. Agreed. Yes, Thank you, Art. Sir. Appreciate uh, it. Yep, yep. All right. Uh, Take care. On uh, the last minute here, let me get to Connor in Atlanta, Georgia. What's up, Connor? Hey, how's it going, Hey, Going well. How are you? I am amazing, as usual. Nice. Um, uh, so I wanted to ask about the – I know I'm, I'm, like, very late on this. I just have not had any time to call your show. I've been meaning to call Jesse, too. Um so it's always good to hop back in this. But um, I want to ask about the, the phone call that Trump had with uh, the, the guy. For, uh, he was trying to look for Brad Raffensperger. Uh, yes, the secretary yes. of state of Georgia. Yes. Yep. So, don't, do you think that that phone call makes him look like a beta male? No, I don't think so. I mean, to be honest, I didn't listen to it. But in general, like, he, he doesn't. Seem at all like a beta male. Did you know that Georgia prosecutors are trying to criminally investigate 
the whole thing of him supposedly trying to overturn the results of the election. Man, when, it, to me, he was fighting for America. He was fighting for election integrity. And he was fighting for what he believed. And so right on to him for that. And I think that a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of cowards who, because the mainstream media and establishment don't want this thing looked at, he was fighting an uphill battle, an upstream battle. And nobody else wanted to fight with him. They wanted to abandon him because they saw his power slipping away, his worldly power, right? So they were all mm. too quick to throw him under the bus. So I didn't think that he was a beta for that. I, th I felt that um, he was fighting for us, and I appreciate that about him. So looking for votes that probably don't even exist, is I, I just I don't what do you know mean, how I what do you mean probably don't even exist? That's not what Trump thinks. Well, you're I mean, you're you're pretending that Trump doesn't think that there was um, shenanigans. You really think well, that not, Trump I'm, doesn't think that there were shenanigans? Well, I'm not sure if there were shenanigans. Then how I'm do you sure. then how are you going to say probably don't exist? Because I'm not sure. That's not probable then. Well. Uh, I don't think that, um, uh, uh, well, well, well I'm, I won't say I don't think. I am, I'm, I'm, I'll admit, I'm, I tend to uh, pay attention to other things involving politics than some, uh, than like other things, if that makes any sense. So I don't I, follow. I really, I'm, <laughs> I, I really, I'm really not sure if, if uh, well, there are things I pay more attention to than others. That, that's right. what I'm trying to make. And so you haven't I, paid I, attention I, to the, um, the decades long fight for voter integrity and how well, yeah, we threw I mean, how we threw every precaution to the wind to make mail in voting and all this stuff and there have been we've trucked in illegal aliens into the country and anchor babies and let allowed many of them to vote especially the anchor babies they're considered citizens and so things have been very corrupt for a long time and the mainstream media is lying Endlessly oh, lying and smearing that. Trump, and so that's I another version. That. That's another example of fraud perpetrated on America by the lying mainstream media. It's very communist. So um, no, Trump was within his rights, and um, don't fall for uh, don't fall for the poo pooing, the dismissiveness, the quick to dismiss, the concerns of real Americans, um, just because everybody else is doing it. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, no, I, I don't think I, I don't think I'm necessarily doing that. Like like I said, I I'm really I admittedly after uh, Biden was declared winner, my attention just slipped. Okay, uh, it went it, it went it, like right after like you know how the election yeah that's was what delayed. that's what they counted on. A lot of people just accepted um, the declaration, even though it was before time. It was premature. Yeah. Connor, we'll talk again, man. I'm sorry I didn't get to you earlier. Um, I enjoy cool. I enjoy cool. conversations with you. I like talking with you. Yeah, me, me too. I, I love uh, I like getting my little dose of political talk here and there. Yeah, even though I'm not as focused on it as I used to. be. No but, problem. That's yeah, probably no. fine. How old are you again? Uh, Nineteen. Okay. Well, right on, man. It's good to hear from you. Yes, sir. We'll talk again soon, buddy. Have a good weekend. By the way, do you catch church with Jesse Lee Peterson? I do. Nice. Occasionally, occasionally. Okay. I'm, I'm sometimes working. It's, Sunday, avail but, it's uh, available on audio podcasts, so you could catch it after the fact uh, at more at your convenience, right? You don't necessarily have to pull it up on YouTube or whatever. Okay, okay. I'll, anyway, I'll definitely tuning in. Be tuning no in pressure, just if you want. It's, it's a great... I don't think I've ever regretted going to church with Jesse Lee Peterson. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> All right, take care, man. All right. Have a good Bye. one. Okay, guys, we're way over time. Appreciate it, Joel. Friday here and Chris, white, skateboard white Chris. Um, TheHakeReport.com for my stuff. JessieLeePeterson.com for JLP's stuff. TheFallenState.tv. Also, also, Boundary Building the Man YouTube channels. Those are excellent. We have a new episode of The Fallen State out in less than an hour, guys. So I got to uh, get out there and... Put up the podcast and stuff for the Hake Report. And then Church on Sunday, Church with Jesse Lee Peterson, Sunday, 11 a.m. Pacific Time. Rebuildingtheman.com slash church. The silent prayer is on that page, by the way. You can scroll down. Silent prayer. 
sign up for mailing lists, and donate and all of that stuff. Cool, huh? All right. Take care.